What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Cork Stats here on the Mayo Media Net on YouTube with your host, John Legaza, the big dude with the big mouth from the big apple. That's big Johnny Stud coming to you worldwide from Brooklyn, New York, as always, up before the sun, as always, to bring you this, the fastest show in MLB absolutely anywhere. Make sure you subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. You smash the like button. That is that little cartoon thumb right there. And if you're digging... What we're doing here, make sure you check out the playlist for Bringing It Hot and Heavy, running through it all as much of the nuance and the context and the detail with the graphs and the advanced stats to back it up as we get you ready for the upcoming MLB season. We've been doing it all here today, and I do take requests, you know, and this comes from a follower, Drew. I did see it, and I wanted to get right to work on it. And his question was about Francisco Lindor. Now, I didn't really have any priors. You could see I am from New York. I'm standing here in front of City Field. Beautiful stadium there. Love it. But I didn't really know how I felt about Lindor. I knew he was a really good player. I thought of him as kind of a perennial MVP, first-round talent for fantasy, Roto in particular. And... I don't know, we had the slow start, and then he kind of missed some games, and it seemed like he was okay, but by that point, it seemed like the stain on his arrival was already throughout the media. You know how fans can overreact. He got the big money, showed up, he wasn't great. So I didn't really know how I stood, where I stood, I should say. So I decided to do our thing. If you're unfamiliar to my work, welcome again. I like to be as objective as possible. I talk really fast in case you haven't known. So in order to slow myself down, I like to put these players and teams, whether it's fantasy or betting, into compartmentalized baskets. You know, this will help me be objective. It'll help us to maintain thorough, but it'll also make sure, or at least the best as possible, to keep away those priors, all those biases that we may have had as we run through. Not just surface stats, but then we're going to go through discipline. We want to go through elevation. We want to go through batted ball quality, all the while keeping an eye on the trend, the smaller trend within the larger trend to help give us an idea of what to expect. We're going to do all of that with my boy Frankie Lindor. As always, let's start with the tail of the tape. He's going off at ADP 49. That's the eighth shortstop. You see what he did last year? Only 125 games, 524 plate appearances because of that injury that came at the worst time the batting average was just really lower than any of us thought but it shows you what can happen in a short set did get 20 home runs with 10 steals and the season overall maybe not as bad as I would have thought again with the low BA he did have a 734 OPS which again is not great when you hear the 230 average you think maybe he was terrible it was a 248 BABIP which is extremely low he did have a 341 X wall but that's excellent 18% K to 11% walk and 8% K minus walk is excellent I mean, the basket, not really bad. He kept the ball in the air 42% of the time, which we like. Again, the 341 X Woba, a 379 expected Woba on contact, 8% barrel. Those power metrics getting near average. So you could see where some of maybe the doubts come in. But uh, this program is about the input stats, not the output stats. Let's dive on in and see what we see in that first disciplinary basket. I like to look at rolling averages. This is a much better way to visualize trends and understand the way things are moving it's the best way in my opinion to pick up on improvements looking at season stats and even stats for a half or stats for a month can be misleading we want to see how it's reacting in terms of the trend you see the k metrics that k percent for our audio listeners i have posted up on the left it is oscillated but right where we want it to be <clears throat> It's really topped out at 20%, which we love all below the average. The walk rate, same thing, oscillating right around that 10% double digit, right where we want it to be. So we should not be too worried on the right. I always like to look at not just K and walk when we come to discipline. I like to look at chase rate, that's O swing, and Z contact, which is contact made inside the zone. The chase rate, yeah, we saw it kind of tick up again as of late, but it's been really good right at or below average, so no concerns there. My only worry here thus far is that in-zone contact rate, we did see it dip at the end of 2021 and kind of stay down, right? It went down and stayed down. We didn't see the bounce back up, and it's well below average, and that is a part of the explanation for the low BA, but we want to see high in-zone contact rates with low batting averages, hopefully to explain 
explain you know, a hitter that we think might have gotten some bad breaks. So the disciplinary basket is pretty strong, but the in-zone contact rate, we do have to raise an eyebrow on. I was a bit concerned about what I saw, so I wanted to dive in even more. Here I have your swing and take profiles. For the video listeners, you got a little bit of a treat and getting better at laying these things out nice and neat. The idea here is for your audio listeners is I have it posted year over year over year, three years in a row, 2019, 2020, and 2021. All you need to know about this is your charts on the right. That is the swing profile. You can see it narrow year over year over year into the zone right where Frankie Lindor likes it. So this kind of validates the disciplinary that we mentioned early on, that it is very strong, that the discipline is very strong. And at this point, we have to ask ourselves if we believe in the contact talent before last year. And if your answer is yes, remember Lindor is only 28, then I think given what I'm showing you with the tightening of his swing profile, that if you believe the contact metrics are legit, then you should not be afraid of Lindor up to this point. Let's get into the next basket. That's your elevation. You see the ground ball rate had spiked early on in the year. Once he came back, we saw it start to dip. Over to the right, you see the fly ball rate. I also overlaid home runs. I know it sounds intuitive that fly balls are going to take home runs with it, but some players do hit home runs without the fly balls. Frankie Lindor, Nazi's not one of those, but there is a rather distinct, direct relationship between his fly ball rate and his home runs, both of which we saw spike when he came back. So those are all good things. Frankie posted that rolling average 40% fly ball rate, and it took the home runs with it. So that is a good sign for the power metrics. So speaking of power metrics, let's get into the last basket. There you go. Some more snazzy custom graphics from the big dude. Everybody, I'm telling you, you're never going to stay the same every day. You either get better or you get worse. I try and get better at my trade every single day. What we have up on here for the audio listeners only is all of the kind of more complex, advanced hard hit metrics and how they stack up against the league average. So I have your hard hit rate via fan graphs, then via stat cast. Stat cast is a raw 95 mile an hour metric. I have your barrel, then your blast. Blast are the idea subset of barrels. I have your dynamic hard hit rate and home run per fly ball. I mean, if you can see the video, you see I'm doing a bit of a winch. You could probably hear the inflection in my voice as well. And these power metrics are not great. The hard hit rate right at the average, the hard hit rate via Statcast a bit above, and I believe with the tick up in fly ball rate, we could see that help out the initial hard hit rate with, you know, it has a bit of subjective element to it. So with lift will come Fangraph's hard hit rate, and hopefully with it some barrels, because the bow rate is tied with the average, the blast rate is right there, the dynamic hard hit rate is within one-tenth of a percent, the same to be said for the home run to fly ball rate. Up top, you do see the 343x Woba, though that is helped out by sprint speed, which I don't think is going anywhere. But the 379 expected Woba on contact speaks more to these average kind of power metrics. So this is not to demean Frankie Lindor, but as I make my way through these baskets and what I tend to expect, I think I'm doubting, let's say, mid-30 home runs at that me return, or even 30 home runs at all, given these metrics. So when I had to doubt, I don't like to be too definitive unless I really kind of look with for the trend within the trend, something that I mentioned before. So let's do just that. And here you can see the year-over-year Hard hit rate and bow rate for Frankie Lindor, they both look pretty strong. But what's the trend within the trend within the trend here is we do have to still zoom out. So the hard hit rate is good. The bow rate, though it is on a bullish trajectory, right? That is a good thing. Higher highs, higher lows. It's still in the single digits or even really topping out at 10. So even if we got some continuation on this chart, which I think is, is fine, it's it's valid to think that we might, that still has us in the low double digits. Your 11%, you know, for just cracking 10 would get him to that high. So again, given the power metrics, though they are in a 
good trends. We should be running for the hills here. I am really worried about projecting, you know, those more advanced home run totals, right? The big bopper totals that we've seen, even with some of the other hitters, you know, we've broken down that you might not think of. If you're curious what I'm talking about, they call that a tease in the business. Get up in the Mayo Media Net playlist, and don't be afraid to get up in the comments and let me know how I'm doing. Things you want to add, things you want to subtract, and other stuff you want to hear. We are here for you. We're going to make you the sharpest player in your league. So let's get back into Lindor and what we think about the future and the best way to kind of think about getting into the future is go to people smarter than me. I generally like to start with steamer projections. They have him for the eighth shortstop, returning almost $17, full complement of games. They have a bit of a return in the batting average from 250, but there's at 30 home runs and something I am a bit worried about. The counting stats, 93 ribbies and 83 runs for the audio listeners, would be in line with where I would be if I were into a 30 home run projection. But I already said before that I'm not. So I think I'm lower than the field here. Even if I were to give him those 13 steals, I think you may even get a bit more. Frankie is excellent on the base paths. Again, I don't like to be too definitive without being as thorough as possible. All the other projection systems, or at least the major ones, had, did come out this week. So I wanted to dive into that in particular with the batting average. So I made sure I have the bat X, I have the bat, I have ATC, steamer, zips, and depth chart projections up to take a look along with Frankie Lindor's rolling batting average. So you got to be careful here trying to make, too, again, to be too definitive. Running themes here, it's not to beat. A, a dead horse. These things matter. We always want to validate our work, but not be too definitive understanding range of outcomes and charts can move in any direction. So where I'm going with this is if you are looking at the video, it does look bearish overall, right? We've had lower lows and lower highs in succession. However, coming off the low, considering the injury and having Lindor finish near his average, there is an argument to be made that we will get continuation considering the new environment, considering the track record. And where I'm going as far as the technical analysis for this chart was if we did get continuation of this leg back up to the 290, 300 hitter that we saw and at one point even expected, we really shouldn't be too surprised because that would then just make a rectangle, right? We never expect infinite continuation. But if Lindor did get back up to that 290, 300, then maybe we'd be expecting to regress a little bit from there. But it is in the range of outcomes. None of the big projection systems are expecting that this year. That's why I made sure to post them. They're all pretty similar as far as batting average. Steamer is the lowest at 252. He tops out on the bat at 259, who also agrees with me to tack on a couple more steals. The bat also agrees with me that he's not quite at 30 home runs. That, Derek's, that is Derek Cardi's system, one that I have always subscribed to. And I put out work before his projections are out, so it's not as if I copy him. I have the receipts to prove that. I just know his him and him and I, our work, really does seem to align. So if you're ever wondering how I feel about a player's projections, a hitter in particular, probably check the bat's projections. So I think that's more what I expect from Frankie Lindor. So, in conclusion, I, I think he justifies the cost if you're getting Frankie at the ADP around 60. But, the big but here, the big shaking butt for me here, is format dependency. Meaning, in Roto, he is fine at the cost. He may even overperform that in return even more of a profit than the $17 that you expect. He easily could be a five-category contributor. He's coming off not only the short season, but then the injury season. He was excellent in the second half, and we know he has a top side as an MVP, you know, vote-getting caliber player. So do not sell Lindor short, in particular in Roto, because of the steals. And if he ends up, you know, getting you 27 bombs with 15 steals, and if the average outperforms the projections and it is a 265, 270, he's been more of a $20 player or more, and that will be excellent. Where I'm pumping the brakes is in point format. I'm not interested. It's not interested. This is not the profile that I'm looking for. I'm looking for higher OPS. I'm looking for higher home run ceilings absolutely based on the power metrics within. 
So though Frankie's power metrics are trending up over, you know, year over year over year, and it is important to not throw away a downgrade. No, nothing moves up. Pick your favorite, you know, stock chart that's up or crypto chart that's up a million percent. Zoom in, you will see dips. That is just how the world works. These things do not work in a linear fashion. So we just may have seen the down leg in the larger bullish trend. So I'm not out on Frankie Lindor in Roto at all. And I think that's why format, dependence, and nuance and context, all the things that you come here for are so very important. So give me Lindor and Roto. I'm passing in point leagues. And I think that'll do it for us here at Quark Stats and the Mayo Media Network. Please make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button. And like I said, get up in the comments. Let me know how I'm doing. Thank you again, Pat and Matt, for the platform. I really do enjoy this. Everybody, cross your fingers for me. My finals nomination for Baseball Article of the Year is still hanging out there. They have not determined a winner yet. Hopefully, they land on the big guy. Not that I live for validation, but I will accept it. So, all right, everyone. I think that'll do it. Remember, remember, remember. When you work this hard, it feels a lot less like luck. All right, man, I catch you all on the flip side. Yo, peace.